The Cotswolds, one of England's most beautiful areas of natural beauty that's very popular with tourists. In this video, Adrian and I will show you how we spent three days in the Cotswolds, England. And at the end of this video, we will let you know if this short amount of time is enough to appreciate the Cotswolds. We'll show you breathtaking places such as the fairy tale villages of Bybury, Castle Coon, Laycock, Burton on the Water, Upper Slaughter, and Lower Slaughter. We'll also take you to the medieval city of Sirencester, Laycock Abbey, the renowned site where a famous Harry Potter scene was filmed, and an ancient Roman ruin site in Chedworth. Also, we will share where we found quite possibly one of the best fish and chips we have ever had, and a phenomenon that we witnessed which has never happened in the Cotswolds before. You will be shocked to see it. Stay till the end to find out what it is. By the way, if you have other places and tips that you would like to share, or if you have any questions, please drop us a comment. We always make an effort to respond to every single one of them. Adrian and I spent three days and two nights in the Cotswold and we were able to see quite a few of the best spots. Our experience at the Cotswolds really blew us away. But there were also some aspects of our visit that were not so pleasant. We will let you know why later in the video. The Cotswolds is a picturesque region in the southwest of England covering five counties or shires. Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, Oxfordshire, Somerset, and Warwickshire. That's a huge area and you're probably thinking, how can we make the most of our visit with such a limited amount of time? Well, you don't have to cram everything in one short visit to truly enjoy what the Cotswolds has to offer. And we did just that. The Cotswolds is very well known for its fairy tale like villages, gorgeous landscapes, and historic sites. When we first arrived at our accommodation in a village called Whittington in Gloucestershire, we were blown away by how mystical and serene our surroundings were. We stayed in an eco friendly cabin within a working farm. Our views were second to none, and the entire place was modern with a farmhouse touch. It was very comfortable, secluded, and idyllic. The village was perfectly located, a short distance away from some popular spots. They even have this traditional red phone booth that they converted to a small village library. It was a quintessential English village with all of its country charm. After leaving our bags in the cabin, we headed out to explore. The first place we went to was Burton on the Water in Gloucestershire. Nestled in the heart of the Cotswolds, Burton on the Water is a charming village famous for its quaint stone houses and idyllic setting. The river Windrush winds its way through the village center, crossed by a series of low bridges that earned Burton the name Venice of the Cotswolds. The low bridges that allow you to cross the river are a popular spot for pictures. With its traditional shops, tea rooms, pubs and restaurants, bakeries and cafes perfect for a cup of tea or coffee with a pastry, or maybe just to enjoy a delicious Cornish pasty, a savory snack of buttery and flaky pastry with a yummy meat and potato filling. And family attractions like the Motor Museum and the Model Village, Burton should be on your list of villages to visit in the Cotswolds. We arrived late in the afternoon, and when we got there, the tourist activities had slowed down. But there were still quite a few people who were enjoying the nice weather and the village's pleasant setting. 
After spending some time in Burton on the Water, we made our way to Lower Slaughter, a quaint and historic village a few miles down the road. And when I say historic, this village has been inhabited for over a thousand years. Picture perfect cottages line both banks of the River Eye, and on a beautiful spring day like this, the flowers made these houses even more mesmerizing. St. Mary's Chapel, the village's parish church, has a rich history with parts dating back to the 13th century. There is also a water mill that may have been around since the 11th century. Lower Slaughter Manor House, or Slaughter's Manor House as it is now called, is a protected building that has been around since the Middle Ages. We walked on both banks of the River Eye and admired the beautiful cottages that dotted the walkways. However, after a few minutes, we started to feel a little bit uncomfortable while exploring the village. Since these cottages are occupied by residents who probably wanted some privacy, peace and quiet, it felt a little bit intrusive, especially while we were filming and taking pictures. Especially when I saw the sign, which was probably just a little bit of banter, but with an indirect message to the tourists. Here is a very important tip to consider when visiting the Cotswolds. Since most of the villages tourists walk through are mostly filled with homes occupied by residents, please be mindful of these things. Number one, respect their space and privacy. Number two, do not create too much noise. Number three, do not peer into windows. And most of all, number four, do not trespass. Unfortunately, we saw quite a few of these things happen during our time here, and we felt bad for those who live in these beautiful villages. We then drove a few minutes up the hill towards the village of Upper Slaughter. Upper Slaughter is a charming and picturesque village with a tranquil atmosphere. Here you will see adorable stone cottages that defy most Cotswold villages and historic landmarks such as the 12th century parish church and graveyard. After a long tiring day of traveling, Adrian and I retired to our cozy rental and caught some shut-eye to prepare for another busy day. Adrian and I have a lot more adventures to share with you and we would like you to join us. Subscribe now to get notified of our upcoming videos. The following morning, we headed to quite possibly the most popular village in the Cotswolds, Bybury. Why is it popular? Well, because of this. And this is Arlington Row, which you have probably seen countless of times. This popular row of stone cottages appear on every brochure about the area, and many others use it as an inspiration for paintings, pictures, songs, books, and many others. Arlington Row showcases a row of 17th century weaver's cottages built from honey-colored Cotswold stone with steeply pitched roofs and picturesque gardens. They were built in the 14th century as a wool store and were later converted to homes for the weavers. These cottages are now all owned by the National Trust and are let or leased to private tenants, with the exception of one which can be rented as a holiday home. Bybury in the county of Gloucestershire, often described as one of the most beautiful villages in England, is a quintessential Cotswold gem. The River Cole flows gently through the village, enhancing its charm with quaint stone bridges and lush green meadows. Bybury is great for photography, but you can also visit other places such as a trout farm, church, or just amble along on the streets to admire the scenery. Be warned though, there aren't many places to park here and it gets busy. Come first thing in the morning if you can.
Castle Coombe, located in the Storybrooke Wiltshire countryside of England, exudes an enchanting charm that feels like a step back in time. This breathtakingly stunning English village, often hailed as one of the prettiest in the country, boasts a quaintness that is hard to match. Its narrow winding streets, lined with honey-colored stone cottages, adorned with colorful gardens, lead to the heart of the village where the Market Cross, a medieval monument, stands proudly. Surrounded by lush greenery and the gentle flow of the River Bybrook, Castle Coombe offers visitors a serene escape into history. With its ancient church and peaceful atmosphere, the local church in Castle Coombe, St. Andrew's Church, dates all the way back to the 13th century. It is a perfect example of medieval architecture, bracing the picturesque village with its timeless beauty. One thing to remember is that there is no parking in the village itself. A decent-sized public parking lot or car park can be found at the top of the hill before walking down to the village. Like majority of the car parks in England, it is paid. You can pay by cash, or online, or through an app. Sirencester is a charming market town in Gloucestershire. It exudes a charming blend of history and modernity. As one of the oldest towns in the country, its Roman roots are palpable in the town's medieval streets, which are lined with limestone buildings, housing quaint shops, cozy cafes, and traditional pubs. Sirencester's rich history as a thriving wool town during the Middle Ages is reflected in its architecture and the impressive parish church of St. John the Baptist, which was founded in 1117 by King Henry I. It was a significant Augustinian monastery that flourished throughout the medieval period, becoming one of the wealthiest and most influential religious houses in the country. However, the Abbey's prosperity came to an abrupt end during the dissolution of the monasteries under King Henry VIII in 1539. <laughs> By the way, we had one of the best plates of fish and chips we have ever had at the Malt and Anchor here in Sirencester. Whatever secret sauce they use to make their batter so crispy is simply out of this world. Even their onion rings with black sesame seeds were so uniquely delicious, and the mule frites weren't so bad either. And the best part? Everything we ate was affordable. After our large fill of fish and chips, we headed to our final stop for the day, the Chedworth Roman Villa. It is one of the largest and most elaborate Roman villas discovered in Britain. Constructed in phases from the early 2nd century to the 5th century, this 4th century building included a heated and furnished west wing containing a dining room with a fine mosaic floor and bathing suites. The villa was discovered in 1864 and was excavated and opened to the public soon afterwards. It was acquired in 1924 by the National Trust, who have conducted a long-term conservation program with new on-site facilities and covered buildings. It's a toilet with a view. Amazing. One thing to note, though, is that there is limited parking here. Try to visit early in the morning or later in the afternoon. And if the sun is shining, enjoy the wonderful grounds and the museum. 
many visitors have picnics here as well. On our way back to our cabin, we made it a point to buy some British snacks that we have been missing since moving back to the US from the UK. Okay, what you got there? Fruit and nut. We also spent the evening watching Eurovision. We couldn't miss that. But what we looked forward to was this phenomenon that was about to happen. We were made aware of the possibility of witnessing an extremely rare event that could happen any time that evening. And finally, after a few hours of waiting, we saw this. There was an unusually high activity all throughout the Northern Hemisphere that night and we were lucky enough to have witnessed this in the Cotswolds. Sadly, our short stay had to come to an end the following day. Our last stop in the Cotswolds was the enchanting village of Laycock in the county of Wiltshire. Today I'm in Laycock, which is quite possibly one of the most popular villages here in the Cotswolds. It is gorgeous out here. Unfortunately, Adrian is not feeling very well, so he decided to stay in the car. So I'm going to take you around and I'm gonna show you around Laycock Abbey, which is absolutely beautiful. And I love the church bells behind me. Laycock, a strikingly gorgeous village within the heart of rural Wiltshire, is a step back in time with its beautifully preserved medieval charm. Largely untouched by modern development, the village boasts quaint cottages made from honey-colored stone that line its narrow winding streets. Laycock is great for sampling traditional fish and chips, British baked goods, cream teas, and local crafts. There is also the local parish, St. Syriax, a 14th century Anglican church that features many monuments of Laycock's landowners. While walking through the streets of Laycock, I found these little baskets of homemade baked goods in baskets at the doorstep of certain homes. They were for sale for a very small amount, a pound actually for this one, but it's an honor system. Those who wish to purchase them like me have to leave money either in the basket or in a sealed container or through the meal slot on the door. Laycock's historic significance is evident in the impressive Laycock Abbey founded in the 13th century and later transformed into a Tudor mansion. At the entrance of Laycock Abbey is a museum of photography. Housed in the Fox Talbot Museum, it commemorates the pioneering work of William Henry Fox Talbot, who created the first photographic negative in 1835 at Laycock Abbey. The Abbey rooms are available to visit starting at 10.30 a.m. And for a quick bite to eat or a coffee, the Cloisters Cafe can be found here too. Laycock Abbey is also a perfect place for a stroll. Walking and exploring the grounds with the birds singing above me was a perfect way to start my morning. I also made it a point to visit the garden and I'm glad I did. Visiting in the spring meant a lot of the flowers were in bloom. See this castle behind me? This is where some of the Harry Potter scenes were filmed. Sorry about the dog barking in the background. Laycock's timeless beauty has made it a popular filming location for period dramas and movies.
And for those of you who have seen the Harry Potter movies, I'm sure you'll recognize this corridor, this room, and the Black Cauldron. Driving through the Cotswolds is an experience itself, with its beautiful and mesmerizing scenery. However, for those who are not used to driving on British roads, it could be very daunting, especially since a lot of the country roads leading to the most popular destinations are narrow and sometimes would only have one lane. Plus, it involves driving on the left side of the road. So for those of you who wish to tour the Cotswolds without the daunting task of driving, there are plenty of tour companies that can take you to the majority of the tourist destinations. We have included some links to some tours in the description. So in conclusion, three days in the Cotswolds, Adrian and I both decided were not enough to explore all of what this area of natural beauty has to offer. However, it was enough for us to see some of the most popular places and our visit gave us a concrete idea of what the Cotswolds charm is all about and it left us a desire to spend more time here in the future. If you remember at the beginning of the video, we said that there were certain things about the Cotswolds that we weren't so fond of. Well, it's a place where we felt like once you visit somewhere, there wouldn't be an immediate need to go back. Majority of the structures in the Cotswolds are grade listed buildings, which means they are protected from major alterations without gaining prior permission from the local county. So, that means updates to the area don't happen frequently. Also, it felt a little strange to be visiting villages just to see houses. It felt a little intrusive. Plus, the crowds can get really bad, especially during the spring and summer, leading to issues such as road congestion and overcrowded facilities such as car parks and tourist attractions. But. These won't deter us from returning to the Cotswolds to visit the rest of this stunning and picturesque area. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Join us next time as we visit another English national wonder, the Lake District. We hope you found this video to be very helpful and enjoyable. And if you haven't, please subscribe and or drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon. Stay curious and keep exploring.